Hey, Google, what's your favorite show? Anything with animals. The world is full of so many fascinating microcosms. Watching creatures up close in their natural habitats is fascinating. What about technology shows? We're looking at Google Home today on Dotto Tech. Steve Dotto here. How the heck are you doing this fine day? Here at Dotto Tech, we make technology easy so you can do more. More what? Well, you can watch more nature shows with your new best friend, Google Home, I suppose. And that is going to be the topic today, looking at the smart speaker system, Google Home. But before we do, a quick favor to ask is please subscribe to this channel. And while you are at it, hit the notification bell so you get notification of all of our new videos as we publish them. As I mentioned, the topic today is Google Home, one of a new class of these smart speakers. Amazon has theirs, Apple has theirs, Google has theirs. They all work similarly, but slightly different than one another. Essentially, they're all intelligent assistants that are built into a speaker package, uh, always auditing and listening to what's going on around for a, a, a key or a magic phrase that springs them into action. For example, Okay, Google, what's on my calendar? There are 11 calendar entries this week. Here are the first three. The first one is tomorrow at 9.30 a.m., and its title is TRX TNA, Toned and Awesome. Second, tomorrow at 1.10 p.m., you have Flight to San Diego, AC 8668. The third one follows on Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. with the title Tyler Anderson Event. This software, this, what was being enacted there, is technology called Google Assistant. So the Google Home uses both your Google account and general search on the internet to provide access to all different sorts of services. You can do normal Google search stuff, the sort of stuff you would search for in the Google bar, but you would, you can all, in the Google search bar, but you can also use it to access your personal information that's attached to your Google account, such as you just heard, my calendar. Now it's the, the term that I, when I said, Okay, Google, you see it wakes up when that happens. Now it's going to be confused because I just woke it up and it doesn't know what I want it to do. Listen. Sorry, I don't know how to help with that yet. No, I don't suppose you do. That's okay though. But so, so what's happening is it is auditing for that key phrase. And then when that happens, it listens and it tries to provide whatever service you ask for. And there's a huge variety of services that are currently available through the Google Assistant and more to come. Now the Google Assistant technology is not just available on the uh, home units, but it's also available on your smartphone as well. So you can access the Google Assistant and even on the computer for that matter. So you can access this technology through a variety of different interfaces. But the Google Home is what we're looking at today. It comes in three different configurations of these smart speakers. And for most of us, we're gonna use them as just that, as smart speakers. Far and away, the thing that we use this the most for is to play music in different rooms, but we also use it for other things. The music playing is, is gorgeous though. I have it set up. I've got a Google, uh, Google Play music account. So when we come home after a day's work or while I'm cooking, I say, hey Google, play some Chet Baker. All right, playing Chet Baker on Google Play Music. Okay, Google, stop. So we've got all of that built in to these small packages. Now, when we set it up initially, I thought that I would be logging into my computer and I would be setting up the speakers through probably plugging in a USB port or something like that to configure them. But I was quite pleasantly surprised to learn that your computer is not needed to set up the Google Home. Uh, instead, what happens is you turn them on and they create a little kind of a mesh network immediately themselves. Then you take your smartphone and it can be either the, an Apple phone or uh, an Android phone and you configure the Google Home uh, speaker system through the, through the app on your phone. Of course, you have to download the Google Home app first. But once that happens, you basically go through and you do a fairly simple configuration process where you do a little a peer-to-peer little -peer network first where your phone talks to your Google speaker. Okay, you can stop now. Okay, Google, stop. Keeps wanting to keep doing it. It just tries to be helpful. That's all. It's just trying to be. And it, by the way, for the rest of this video today, it's probably going to be super irritating as it pops open and starts to to play when as I'm explaining different things and not actually talking to it. <coughs> but I digress. Back to setting it up. 
So what happens when you go to configure the actual device itself is once you've got your phone talking to the device, then you connect the device to the internet, then you connect the device to your Google account and everything is done and it's all set up. And then Google Assistant is then monitoring everything that's happening. And as I mentioned, it knows who you are. It'll even recognize, it knows who you are initially through your Google account, but then it also will recognize your voice and recognize that different people's voices are attached to different accounts. Now, you can also take multiple speakers and put them in different rooms. We have one of the larger uh, speakers down in our family room, and then we have these in our bedrooms. Okay, Google, stop. Oh man, I might have to unplug her, him, it. We also have these in all of the bedrooms so that we have music in the morning and we have, and we can even use it as an intercom system. You can say, okay, Google, okay, Google broadcast. It's What's dinner. It's dinner time. Okay, broadcasting now. So that plays in every other house room in the house. So there's no more. Okay, Google, stop. Oh, so eager to sing. So eager to sing. <laughs> now, if we take a look on my smartphone, we can see all of the different devices in different people's rooms, and you can see what music is playing or what they're being used for in each of the different rooms. Now, one of the biggest questions people have about this completely understandably, is everybody's concerned about privacy. And it's a legitimate concern that we're concerned that something is in our house and listening. Now, what Google tells us is that they are auditing, that the computer, that the uh, Google Assistant is not actually listening and recording everything that you say, but rather listening for that key phrase in order to invoke an action. And if you go back, you can actually go into your Google account and you can, you can search and you can see all of the different transactions or different uh, um, uh, recordings that it's made over time, exactly what it's recorded and what it's logged. So there's a, definitely a privacy concern that we all have, but that is going to be offset against the convenience and the benefits that you get from a device like the Google Home. Personally, other than the music, the thing I find far and away the most valuable is the ability to, as I'm cooking, say, Okay, Google, put some cheese on my shopping list. Okay, I've added some cheese to your shopping list. And then when I'm out and about shopping, and I go to my shopping list, which is right there, available to me, you should see right at the top, cheese, some cheese. <laughs> Not any cheese, just some cheese. So anybody that's cooking, anybody that's doing anything in the house, if they say, tell Google exactly what it is that they're missing, you can attach it to the shopping list. And then whoever's out doing the shopping has the most current and up-to-date list. And you can check things off as you're going. I find that to be tremendously convenient. Something that I just discovered the other day, which I was fiddling around with, is I set it up so that I could make a phone call. And I can say, for example, Hey Google, call Shannon McDonald Mobile. Calling Shannon McDonald Mobile. Hello. Hey, honey. Sorry to bother you, but I'm calling you from the Google Home to show everybody in a, in a show. So you're actually in, in the video now. So 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 don't. That's si cool. I just met up with my friends that I haven't seen for a year. So I should probably go. Okay, off you go. I, I, thanks for the help. You're welcome. Good luck with the show. Oh, thank you. Bye. I love you. Love you too. Bye. Ooh, that's a little personal. There we have it. <laughs> making phone calls. So I'm, we, they're constantly adding new features to Google Home as, as time goes on, or Google Assistant, I guess is what it is, as time goes on. And now, as I mentioned, at least I think I mentioned, the Google Assistant is also available on your smartphone. Now, it works slightly differently on iOS, where Apple blocks you being able to just say, okay, Google, and having the phone recognize it. Okay, you, no, okay, Google, stop. Uh, Sorry, I don't understand. I know, I know, this is very stressful for you. Okay, okay, stop. Okay, Google, stop. Oh. Oh. But on the Android phone, if you're an Android phone user, you already know and you've already been using the Okay, Google feature for quite some time. Now, do I think that the Google Home is the best smart speaker system on the planet? I have no idea. Amazon Alexa seems to have some really great things going for it, and I'm sure that Apple will also have some great things in their HomePod. Each of these different companies brings different strength to the smart speaker market. 
the Amazon Alexa is super strong in the whole shopping space and providing for the family type space because that's Amazon strength. Google, no surprise, is incredibly powerful in the search and in the and in the integration with your own personal productivity system through Gmail and, 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 uh, and Google Maps and Google Calendar, that sort of stuff. Apple, I'm just thinking, is probably going to be very strong in the music space as that is one of their core competencies. Uh, but regardless which one you choose, you're going to find a delightful experience as you integrate it with your life. You'll be moderately disappointed at some things that it does or doesn't do or does differently than you think it should be. And you will be mildly concerned about loss of privacy as you move along. That's just the way it's going to be. I hope that you found today's video to be useful. Now we do have a favor to ask. Please remember to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to this channel and share this video with your friends. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.